After the engine was installed, we got to work fully stripping the interior. This takes longer than you think, and there are a lot of things to unbolt. The next step was to remove the sound deadening, as it actually weighs a fair amount, and this is where I was going to have to weld the roll bar in. We used a heat gun, and it came right up. You can also use dry ice and freeze it, and then smash it. After that, I removed the sunroof cassette, which is really quite a lot of weight way up high in the car, and I got to work fabricating a sunroof delete panel, which I made from some 20 gauge steel and a lot of rivets. This is actually fairly straightforward, just time consuming, especially if you rivet by hand. After I finished that up, I handed the car over to my friend Danny from DoubleClutch.ca Magazine, who also happens to be a welder at Full Fusion Welding. I got my cage from Roll Cage Components, and they do the majority of the fab work and design work, and you need someone like Danny to weld it all together. Just got to full fusion welding. This is where we turn garbage into gold. And speaking of garbage, there's a garbage can right there. Well, part one's done. Stitched in some plates to disperse the weight for the base of the roll bars. So, and we had to trim the roll bar to actually get a vertical. So, part one is done. Good thing I'm in the shop because it's friggin' raining outside. Well, got the two uh, rear supports in place. And I had to stitch in some plates on the bottom to disperse the weight again. Coming along, coming along. So, had to remove the door cards in order to let the door close and clear the, the uh, downward bar. And the seat just fell out of its place. <laughs> I guess I should have bolted it. But, uh, yeah. Coming along nicely. Well, day one's out of the way. Got her all tacked up. And uh, thanks, Thomas, for prepping everything for me. You know, it's nice that uh, you had the door sills removed. So I had some room to close the doors not and uh, yeah so that's it all fit up pretty horizontal I must say minimal clearance at the roof which is ideal and uh, yeah tomorrow I'm gonna fix some of those holes in the floors and weld her up I picked up the car after Danny had done a great job welding the bar in but I only got a few miles before. All right, so that went just about as well as I thought it was going to. We're at a gas station in Lindsay, Ontario, because, well, we got the race car back. Everything else is kind of working. But I knew this was gonna be a problem. I was just kind of ignoring it, hoping that it would go away, and it didn't. All right, down there is a power steering pump. It's not hooked up to anything. There's no lines or anything. So, I was just using it as a pulley because I couldn't get a belt that would fit with the power steering delete from Condor Speed Shop. So what I ended up doing was just running it as a pulley and I roasted the power steering pump and it almost caught on fire. So yeah, we're getting towed. I finally got the right belt size for the power steering delete and then I took the ECU to Jim over at AMT Tuning who does high quality custom tunes. He set me up with something that will suit my car and my driving style. But even though I worked as hard as I could, I still couldn't get the car ready in time for the first Ontario time attack. So I went anyway to support my friend and fellow Throttle House writer Kevin Wong. You can read his experiences of the day on thethrottlehouse.com. Alright, we're out. Ontario time attack still. Here's Kevin. He's currently leading his class like a boss. It's only because I'm not here and competing. That's really the only reason why he's leading. Not that we're in the same class anyway. What are you doing, Kevin? Check my oil, my Check feet juice. Your feet juice. What else Val calls it? Is it, is it? I bet. Is it uh, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You don't see this on my channel very often. Oh. Pretty good, right? Feet juice. Feet juice. Yeah, we're good.
We're good. So Kevin's gonna go out and set a, what did you do again? One, one twenty three seven. For those of you that know this track, S two thousand with no coilovers, just tires. That's a good. That's a good time. Tires and camber bolts. Offset ball joints. That's what it is. Camber bolts. Am I a peasant? I kid you. How did a good job designing this? Yeah, well, just right out of the box, it's faster than that car. I think probably ever will be. I think. That's because it's never going to end up being here, as it never works. With only two weeks between Time Attack events, I got to work, and after some very last minute work from my friends at Burning Rubber Tire and Speed, I hope you watched my live stream of that, the car was finally ready to go. The roll bar allowed me to run a Sabelt six point harness, and I was feeling good, even though we couldn't quite get the setup I was hoping for out of my current suspension. But even with my minimal front camber, I sent it as hard as I could. This second Ontario Time Attack event took place at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park Driver Development Track, which is one of the most fun tracks in the area, and it's made even better when OTA is running it. Their organization is impeccable, as always, and the competition is everything you have ever wanted in grassroots motorsports. All right, we are at Ontario Time Attack. It's very hot, and I'm wearing a fireproof racing suit. Ah. There's no air conditioning in my car. Welcome to racing. So, then the morning runs. Um, we're gridding based on how fast we were there. So, uh, I'm in GT2 class. I managed a, uh, what did I do? A 130, wait, 90, a 135.3, I think is what I did. Which I'm pretty proud of, that's a pretty good time. This car is actually very hard to drive. All right, so for those of you that have been following the build, Condor Speed Shop bushings everywhere. And now that I've had it on the track, I can tell you that that does make a difference. The car is incredibly tight. It's very obvious that the suspension is capable of doing its job, which is pretty important. Um, and the engine and transmission mounts and shifting, you notice it a lot. There's no canting of the engine like this, and the shifts just happen cleaner. You notice if you mess up uh, more, which is good, and you get better. Um, as for just driving the car around with the Condor Speed Shop bushings, there is a lot more vibrations that come through in the steering wheel, but only when you're like just rolling away. You feel it go zzzz, and it buzzes through the steering wheel, and then it just kind of, you don't notice it on the road. I think the car just feels tighter, right? Which is nice. It's a good balance between road and track. I'm running a renowned USA Alcantara steering wheel, which I really, really like, and it's important because I did a Condor Speed Shop power steering delete, and the, the this is necessary to be able to turn the wheel. This is very high steering effort right now.
it also makes it harder for me to set a fast lap time. So we'll see what happens. I need to get at least three tenths faster for this run. My timer just died, so I don't know how fast I went. No idea. I was really fast in a couple corners, but I messed up a couple others. So I have a feeling I'm going to be at the same time. I have no idea. All I know is that I'm really out of breath and I need to drink water. Sadly, I ended up fifth in class, but I was happy because the car was very competitive and there was under a second separating the four people in front of me. I can't wait to get a more ideal suspension setup because coming up next is the Grand Prix track at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. I can't wait for that one. It's one of the best tracks in the world. Kevin did well in his class. Make sure you read his story on thethrottlehouse.com and don't forget to subscribe for more Throttle House.